Turn on all, there it is. Ooh, turn on all of them. Glory to God. Now you're going to have to turn me down. <laughs> Don't you love it when James is out of pocket? Oh, hey, can you turn me down a little bit? I'm really loud. Can you not tell that? Okay. Anyway. Anyway, I can stand up here like this. <laughs> Okay, if the Spirit of God can lead us in knowing that we are a child of God, uh, He can lead us into anything, into any area. Whatever it is it may be that you have need of, whatever it is that you have need to have knowledge or wisdom of what you need to do or where you need to go, what needs to ha take place, turn inward. Don't always just listen to what everybody else is saying. I'm telling you, it's so vitally important in these last days that Christians learn to do that. Because I'm going to tell you, when you go following after the, the, the vast majority, you, you, we're going to get be led in the wrong places. Did, Mary Jo talked this morning about she hates standing in lines. Y'all remember that? Rama Bible Training Center did research with Kenneth Hagin when he was still alive. How many hours, they looked up, I think it was on Barner Research, he helped them out. How many hours in the lifespan of a person that we stand in line? And Kenneth Hagin used to say, you know what? People will see a line form over there and just get in it and don't even know where the line is going. They done it. They done stuff just to see. People think that they're getting in line for you know something, and all, the doors. All you gotta do is just go walk in that door or whatever. But there was a line that had formed over there, and people just walk right over to it, and stand in that line. And listen, the news media is is setting us up in that media area right now with all this is going on. It's a test run to see. Satan's watching every bit. What he can get away with, how he can maneuver people, manipulate people. All those sort of things are going on. Yeah. Herd immunity. They even say in their herdness, like cattle. And it's scary stuff. So it's vital that us to know, just like what Proverbs says there, the Spirit of man is the lamp unto the Lord. Let the Spirit of God lead you and guide you of, in the things that we need to do. Amen. And uh, trust, learn to hear the voice of God and trust that. You know, you can do that uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. You can ask the Lord uh, to show you something or reveal something to you or or ask the Lord what you need to do concerning something, and then turn your spirit inwardly toward Him, and then listen. Okay? Now this is just be a test. And th what comes up in your spirit, you do. And you'll know real quick if you was being led by the wrong spirit. Let, let it be something simple. But test the spirits. Start learning the voice of God and what He's telling you to do. And uh, I'm telling you, it's important in the hour that you and I are living in like never, ever before. Uh, so if, now if we can let, if He can let you know that you're born again, just as that scripture we looked at and stuff, or that you are His child, He can let us know Anything else by the same means, by His Spirit bearing joint testimony with our spirit, uh, that that's the way to go. What is the number one thing that will come up in your spirit that will cause you to know that's the way to go? Now, yes, I understand. You have to you have to begin developing. And hearing that still small voice inside you. And usually the voice that you hear will be your own voice. It's not going to be some thundering voice from God Almighty. I need you to do this. It's going to be your own voice because the voice, the, your conscience is the voice of your spirit. 
And it's your own spirit there, and it's going to have the exact same voice that you have, and it's telling you, do this or don't do that. And the, the key to it, and, and walking this thing out, is be led by peace. If you have peace in your spirit that that's the route that you're supposed to go, that's what you're supposed to do, that's God leading you into that, that, that area, in that arena. Amen. And it's, it, it takes some learning to do it. And I've done it, you know, I, I remember I was, I, was, I was asking the Lord some things one time concerning this, being led by the Spirit of God. And some of the best teaching you'll ever hear of being led by the Spirit of God, I think, comes from Keith Moore. He, he's got some good stuff all the time concerning being led by the Spirit of God and stuff. But I was listening to Charles Capps one day. And he said he was walking out Evidently, he had just a, a, a little runway area on his property where he parked his little plane and stuff, you know. And, uh, or either he is at a little hometown airport there where he lived. I think he lived in England, Arkansas. And uh, must have been in some little airport or something where he had his plane there. And he said, I was walking out to my plane and uh, just kind of talking to the Lord and stuff. And when I got to the plane, I went to the left side of that plane and because, you know, you have to do an inspection of your plane. And the Lord startled him and asked him, he said, why did you go to that side of that plane? Why didn't you go to the right side of that plane? And he said, Lord, I don't know. And the Lord is teaching him, I'm, I, I, I led you to the left side of that plane. And he said, well, how did you lead me to the left side of that plane? Because when you was walking down that tarmac looking at that plane, you saw yourself before you ever got there walk to the left side of that plane and walk around it. I painted a picture for you to know which way you was going to go. And Brother Cow said, you sure did. Because I saw myself walk to the left. He said, I don't always walk to the left side of the plane when I inspect my plane. A lot of times I'll go to the cab, open the thing up, and put my papers in there, and then inspect my plane. God's Word does what? Words paint pictures. So if you don't got no Word in you, you're not going to have a very good picture of anything of the God being able to lead you, you got to get some Word in you. Spend time in the Word of God. you got to spend time in the Word of God. That's so important because it's how to be led by the Spirit of God. This is how we hear from Him and it's how He com uh, communicates with us. It's Spirit to Spirit and it's how He guides us into all the decisions that we make in life. Now, a lot of us many times, you know, I, we all know this is a, a fact. Life is what? Nothing but a bunch of decisions all your life long. You ever notice people that make bad decisions? Not a very good life, is it? You got to start making, you got to start changing the decisions you're making if, you, if, you, if you're going through stuff. And I hate to say it. But I'm going to say it this way. There's a lot of people on the streets when the cops come, they make bad decisions. And guess what? They get killed. Make the right choice. Do what they tell you to do. You can always fight it in court. You can always have justice. If you believe in it at all. Live. Amen. And... Uh, not that cops are always right. I know there's some bad cops out there, and they'll do you dirty and do you wrong. Just go and go and take care of those issues later on. Amen. You're not going to change that. The law's the law. I had to throw that in. Anyway, life is a whole bunch of decisions, and we make decisions every day, thousands of decisions every day. Think about it. Decision of what you're going. Mary Jo calls me from work all the time. What we're going to eat tonight? Oh Lord, I got to make a decision now. Decisions, decisions, decisions. All day long, you've got to make decisions. Make the right decisions. 
Amen. Now, in life, this is the only way that we can get it right, is to hear from God. Be led by God. This is the only way. We, you and I just don't know enough in our own knowing, in our own knowledge. I don't care if you got a PhD in front of your name or a DR in front of your name or anything. You still don't know enough. You do not know enough. You better be led, learn how to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Because why? Because things change all the time. All the time. Things change. Now, yes, you and I should do our research and, and, and learn whatever we can in the natural to a degree and then present that before God and what's the best thing to do? Lord, what's, what's the best thing to do? Don't know what to do here on this. And then start thanking God for His Spirit that He can lead us in which way to go. Now, I'm going to turn to a scripture here, and I'll try to close out with this, because I just, I just, like I said, I wanted this to be kind of short tonight. We've got some other things we will cover. So I'm going to go to Proverbs now, chapter 3. Got to read this to you. Now, understand, you can do all your research. Say you're, it's something, I don't know if it's something you're buying, and it's a big deal, it's, or, or whatever. Do your research... But then don't just rely totally on that because the Bible tells us to lean not on our own understanding. But you need to check with boss. You need to check with the man. He knows stuff me and you don't know. So let's, let's go to this scripture here because it's important. He says in, in chapter 3 of Proverbs, verse 1, My son... Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. We ought to write that down and put it on our mirror at home. You want to live a length of days and long life and have peace? God's Word. Keep my commandments. Keep His laws. God's Word, it'll do it for you. Not only that, it'll bring health to all your flesh. God's Word does all those things. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. That's the favor of God right there. Because it says, in the sight of God and man. God will open doors for you because of what that says right there. Bind the word about your neck. Write them upon the table, tab, uh, table of thine heart. Amen. Verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. You know the number one thing us Christians do nowadays is we reason ourselves right out of the blessing of God. We reason ourselves out because we just don't know something, and then we listen to everybody else and everybody else saying, you know, you listen, go listen to the world, you'll hear every answer in the world that possibly could be given. And we start believing all this stuff over here that we're hearing, and you'll reason yourself right out of God's blessing. Learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. Learn to be led by peace. Listen to the voice of God. And He'll lead you straight into that place where you need to be. Amen. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. There's the key. There's the key. I started out this evening talking about the very fact that you and I can get so caught up in living a life that we don't even invite God into our lives. You can go days and days and weeks and weeks and months and months and everything will be flowing along just wonderfully and you think things are great. But you haven't asked God anything at all concerning your life and the directions that you're going and the decisions you're making. And here's what it says, In all thy ways acknowledge Him. Somebody say, well, how did you know to do that, God? 
You mean God speaks to you? You talk to Jesus? Yep. Every day. Every day. Verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Boy, that just shoots some folks' ego to, to blank and back, don't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. They think they something else. It shall be health to thy navel. Now listen to this. This is still talking about the Word. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Boy, if I had some kind of bone disease or something like that, I'd do what the Bible says about bone disease right there. That's the word I'd be putting on it. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the firstfruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall be burst out with new wine. We talked a little bit, bit about that this morning. There's the natural and the supernatural of God's provision and God's uh, prosperity. But uh, there's your barn. There's your, your storehouse. There's your bank account. And your bank account should be filled with plenty. But you got to have a bank account. A lot of people don't got a bank account. And your presses, that's the place, that's your business, that's your work area, that's your garden that you got till, tilled up over here and you're working that garden. you got to have something going on. That's the natural side of it so that God can bless it. Got to have something going on. It'll burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. Sad thing is a lot of believers do not want to hear the correction of the Lord, especially coming from the pulpit. I had a man in my church one time when I had a church in Summerton. He told me there ain't no man. He's a good man, loved him too. Worker. But he said, ain't nobody going to tell me how to live. No man, no preacher man standing up behind a pulpit going to tell me anything like that. I said, well, you, you ain't got a pastor then, brother. You don't know what a pastor is. Anyway, from whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father his son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. For the, for the merchandise of it is far better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. Man, I tell you, that's something else. She's more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. Who's the her? Wisdom. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding of that wisdom. The wisdom of God is what? The how, 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 how's the old saying go? It's the application of godly knowledge. That's what godly wisdom is. It's the application of godly knowledge. So you've got to dig in the Word to get that knowledge of God, the mind of God, and, and the thoughts of God. And then when things happen around you, then you take that knowledge that you've got and you apply it to this area and you apply it to that area and you speak to that mountain over there and pow! And this thing just starts popping off like, you know, wow! You know? And it says, She's more precious, wisdom is, than rubies, and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. Length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her way... Her ways are ways of uh, pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. There's that peace again. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy in every one that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. By, this, by his knowledge... The depths are broken up and the clouds drop down their dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall thy, be, 
so shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shall thou walk in thy way safely and thy foot shall not stumble. Extremely important to live there in these last days. Amen. I want to dwell in safety and if I walk in the wisdom of God, I'll have that safety. I want to uh, walk and not stumble and if I'll use the, the wisdom of God that I obtain, I will not stumble. That's what that's saying right there. When thou liest down, when thou shalt not be afraid, yea, thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. Mm, sometimes you know how that goes. Sweet sleep. Just remind him of you promised me sweet sleep, Lord. Amen. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Now it didn't say that it might come. It's coming one day. The desolation of the wicked is coming. We serve a just God. Justice will be served. Also, it says in, in Scripture, uh, be, be assured of the fact that your sin will find you out. J justice comes. Amen. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Thank you, Jesus. He's my high tower or my place of refuge. Glory be to God. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. That's why God wants us to prosper. So that we can bless other people. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it in that by thee. Hmm. We're supposed to help one another. We need to be neighborly with one another. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. Why on earth would it say, Envy not thou not the oppressor? Because I know you and I have run across plenty of these things. And I've stepped back. I said, Lord, why is that guy got so much money? He's the biggest crony crook in the town. Don't envy him. He doesn't live in peace. Okay? Don't envy him. Choose none of his ways. But you know, we have entire little cities. They want to set up their, the, their ways, uh, organize crime, organize gambling, organize trafficking, organize this, that, and the other, and say it's all right, legalizing it all and everything else. And it says right there, choose none of his ways. It's wrong. For the forward is an abomination to the Lord. But his secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is the house of the wicked, but he blessed the habitation of the just. Surely he has scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace to the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Man, that's God's word. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep... Proverbs chapter 3 in front of me a whole lot more. I'm going to tell you right now. There's some powerful stuff right there in Proverbs chapter 3 that will just, you know, shake you right there if you really started looking into some of those things. But God is good. God wants us blessed. God wants us prosperous. Don't listen to anybody else that tells you otherwise. <laughs> Listen to turn, rely on the fact to turn yourself inward and listen to the Holy Ghost. And He'll tell you whether He wants you prosperous or how He wants you to be. Amen. Don't let somebody else dictate how you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to believe. Amen. Believe the Word of God. Search after God's wisdom. Search after His understanding of the Word and stuff. And, and, and 
It'll cause you to prosper. It can't do nothing but cause you to prosper. In all areas, spirit, soul, body, socially, economically, all of it is, 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 is it's in there. And the awesome part about it is God's prosperity, uh, what's, the, what's the scripture say? It addeth no sorrow with it. Godly prosperity addeth no sorrow with it. You won't you won't feel sorry that you prospered. You you won't you won't have the sorrows that that rich guy in the world had. See that rich guy over there in the world, he's always scared to death because he's motivated by fear of this guy stealing this from him and this guy stealing this from him and da 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 and he's he he's never got peace. It's the reason why the suicide rate amongst the rich is one of the highest in the world. Amen. <clears throat> they scare to death all the time. And here's you another thing. When it comes to the organized crime stuff that goes on with uh, gambling and the Alabama is talking about again, I, I'm so tired of these politicians going the low route. Go the high route. Always going the low route. Yeah, we need, we need to have a gambling uh, thing going on here. Yeah, you just want to get your paws in there so that the, those uh, cronies can pocket your pocketbook yourself. That's it. Because once that money starts coming in, that's exactly what they're going to do. Every one of them politicians be grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. And it's a shame because that's, that's, not, that, that's not God's way at all. And uh, pray for them. Get rid of them. <laughs> Vote them out. <laughs> because there is a godly way. Godliness, and the Bible, people, more preachers need to preach it, I guess. Uh, godliness is profitable unto all things, the Bible says. Godliness is profitable. You know, I mean, go down here to Birmingham and find the worst place to live. All the garbage going on in it. The murders every night. Everything. Find out how many businesses there are around it. None. It's not profitable to be there. It's not profitable for a business to be operating out of there because all they're going to do is steal from you. And then if your customers come to eat, they're going to kill them when they come in and out, in and out the door. Don't nobody want to do business in that place. You go to the best side of Atlanta, Georgia, or the best side of Birmingham, or, or any big city where, uh, where things is, is nice, where there's a rule of law, where there's discipline and expect to be a, a, a state of discipline in that area, you'll find all those businesses just a-booming. Godliness is profitable, that's why. That's where everybody wants to be. Because it's profitable. And it's just a fact. And it's time for politicians to wake up from the, the crazy stuff. Man, alive, I tell you what. Is a fact. Anyway, as we close out this evening, I hate that we didn't get it all on Facebook, the words and stuff, and couldn't hear anything. Thank you, Brother Lee, for letting us know. But uh, <laughs> um, anybody have a prayer request as we close out? Anything at all? Because i got a few things that I'm going to share once we get off. Okay, let's just pray. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. I call each and every one of these here this evening, Father, blessed. I think that the favor of God goes before them in everything that they do, everything they put their hands to, they prosper at, Father God. I thank you for opening doors unto them, Father, of new ways of uh, financial str streams into their lives. Give them the wisdom and knowledge of God. Give them cre creative ideas, Father God, of answering some of the problems that goes on in this world, Father God, and uh, that will prosper by it in the name of Jesus. I call each and every person here this evening, Father God, healed, the healed of God, because healing has already been bought and paid for. We are the healed of God. And if anybody's being attacked right now, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Jesus called uh, sickness satanic oppression. And I bind it and I, I rebuke it off these people's lives right now in the name of Jesus, Father. 
I thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, we are the heel of God. And if something is trying to get on us, that's the devil trying to put it on us. We acknowledge it from the victory standpoint, Father God. We have the victory. Everybody here has that, that victory in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that the angel of God also go before each and every one of us. And I thank you for divine protection. I plead the blood of Christ over each and every person here tonight in the name of Jesus. I thank you, sir, for that covenant of protection. And it goes before us, protecting us, returning us all home safely each and every day this coming week. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.